Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I have gotten multiple requests from people about how I did my Crown of Thorns egg. Uh, I don't have the egg anymore. I uh, attended a workshop in Daytona probably 15 years ago, and they were having a brown bag swap and I hadn't brought anything from my brown bag swap and everybody was admiring my um, admiring my egg so I ended up putting that in the brown bag and one of the ladies that I'm still friends with on Facebook ended up getting that egg she told me the other day she still had it but I've had lots of people that ask me how I did it but I wanted to show you, you know, the process of how I'm going to change it up a little. Uh, the one that I, the workshop that I went to where we, I made the egg was a sanding and polishing workshop. And the lady that had the workshop, and I wish I could remember who it was, um, brought clean, you know, uh, emptied and cleaned chicken eggs. So the one that was in my um, brown bag swap was a real chicken egg. But since I don't have, well I could buy some eggs and clear them out, but I, I've, I've never been good at things like that. So what I ended up doing was buying some white Easter eggs. And these are the ones that come apart. I got these at Hobby Lobby and it just says large Easter eggs and they come in colors and then they also come in the white. So since this is done with translucent I decided I would do just the white. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this egg in white clay. Now this egg, this clay is rolled out to the number five and make sure this is going, yeah. The number five on my pasta machine. Number five is three playing cards thick. And I'm just going to roll it around. Trying to, well, let me show you. Sorry, I needed to back up. Uh, I want to go back to the very beginning, and I had kind of started, not quite at the beginning, but I've got the white plastic egg, and these are the ones that you snap apart, and you can hide little candies or coins or gifts or anything in it, and they snap together pretty well, but since this is going to be handled a lot, I'm going to put just a little piece of tape just a little thin piece, maybe that's what, what maybe a quarter of an inch. Right at the at the crack, and I'll do that in a couple of places. Try to keep wrinkles out of your tape because it will show through your clay. See, there's one. I'll just put one on the other side, and that ought to be plenty. And I have tested these eggs. They do bake in the oven fine. So now I put it on the clay. And it looks like it's going to be about, well, let's see where I didn't mark it. About here. And I'm going to trim some of this off. You don't need a, all this on each end. Just take your egg and wrap it in the white clay. And you just need a thin layer of clay. Like I said, this is a number uh, rolled out to a number four, number, no, number five. And just make sure that it covers your egg. And I'm doing this so that the canes that I make are going to be able to stick 
And then when you start getting up to the rounded part, press as much as you can up before it starts to wrinkle. Then you're going to need to go in with a blade. Where is my blade? You might need to start cutting a slit in your blade so that you can get one side in smoothly. And you'll need to do that several times in order to get your egg covered. And I'm just going to trim this off about there. Maybe cut it at an angle because that's one of the things when you go up and curve, you need things cut at an angle. And then just anywhere that the, the clay is going to overlap itself, just cut it off. And here you can kind of make a little imprint of where you need to cut. Or you can just lay it down gently, don't press it. And just cut. But just take your time. Just try not to let your clay overlap too much. Or at, not at all if you can help it. Let me come in from this side. I know you don't want to watch it. Another thing you can do is kind of pinch it up like this. I'm just trying to show you different ways of accomplishing the egg being covered. And push any excess clay up to the top so you can cut it off. This one I can almost totally cut off. I'm not even going to try pinching this because it's got excess clay from the other side. You might have an easier way of doing this. I am not an expert on covering eggs or covering anything, as a matter of fact. So I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Feel free to leave comments below if you have a better way of doing this. I have no problem with people giving advice. On this end, I think I am just going to pinch and pinch the clay together. And then just slice. And over here, there's sort of a natural place to pinch there. As you can see, I'm not using my sharp, sharp blade. Let me just go on and do all the pinches, and then we'll go back and trim. some dark clay on my blade. So then you just start smoothing these little seams. And some of them you might need to trim a little bit more, like this one. I could have trimmed more. I, I just didn't want to trim too much. But all you want to do is cover the egg with clay. You can even, depending on how you do your cane, which we'll do in a minute, 
you could even use colored clay, which I may do in one, in one. I might do a couple of these, maybe not on screen, but I will do a couple and tell you what I've done. Okay, so here's one that I've got covered, and you need to look real carefully to see if you've trapped any air. And I'm going to take my small rod and just start smoothing this. You want this to be as flawless as possible. There's a little bit of dirt on that, but I, because my cane is, that I'm going to use is going to be translucent, I better take that off. may not be significant, but I don't want to take any chances. probably don't have a clean roller, which is why I'm getting these things on my egg. So let me just wipe it off just to make sure that I've got everything off of it. I thought I had cleaned it, but obviously I hadn't. But just try to, you know, smooth your seams. You can take it and roll it in your hands. Press it with your thumbs, whatever you want to do. But try to get it as smooth as you can. Because it'll be a lot less sanding that you'll have to do at the end. And yes, I sanded. The picture of my egg that, you'll, that you see as my thumbnail was sanded and buffed. There's no finish on it, no sealer, no nothing. It was just sanded and buffed. So there's one egg that's covered. I don't know if that's a wrinkle or if it's a air bubble, so I'm just going to cut it just in case. It didn't seem to want to go away. But there's one egg. And I'm going to cover a second egg because I'm going to do two different canes. And I just want to see what the difference is in them. So I may as well do it on camera. So I'll be back. Okay. I covered my egg. What I did on the second one is I added a little bit of blue to the white. I'm going to see how that changes the effect of the of the thorns or whatever you want to call it. Now, this is my original cane, what's left of it. And I don't know if you can see or not, but this was just regular Kato translucent. And up in here, let me see if I can get it. You might see little swirls going around of color. And that's because I added, um, it'll come to me, I added distressed, here we go, distressed embossing powders. Now the one that I did before, I did yellows. I used this, um, this one, which is, old paper and I had a little bit of this one in there which is milled lavender but as you could see from the picture when the egg was finished you couldn't see any of those lines so I'm wondering if it's even necessary to put the uh, embossing powders in there except to keep this from being totally um, transparent. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use some pink. And what I did is I, I just, this is white translucent clay. And you have to do this a little at a time. Let me move this out of the way. But I'm going to mix this, and I just dumped it because I didn't release. should have this on my work surface anyway. But I'm starting with one package of white translucent, and this is just regular Primo Gold. It is not the 18 karat gold. It's just plain Primo Gold. Can't lay that there because I'm going to use my pasta machine. And what I do is I, I fold this try to seal in your edges to keep the embossing powder in there and run it through my pasta machine. And I thought I'd made a mistake by leaving the pasta machine in the number five place, but you know it seems to be mixing it pretty well. Now I can tell already this is not going to be pink enough, so I'm going to pick up the rest of this embossing powder and mix it in there. And I'm going to mix this and then I'll be back. Okay, I have put some pink embossing powder in here, and it, this is where you make your decision because this is a very pale pink. If you want the pink to show up, you're going to have to add some more. So I'm going to add a little bit. What happens is this embossing powder will melt when the clay is baked and become part of your clay. So I'm just adding, this is two of these sections, and I'm going to do the same thing with the lavender. I think that's going to be enough of the pink. And I think I'll do the same with the lavender. I had gotten out blue, but I think I'm going to use the lavender. So I'm going to condition this, and then I'm going to take two of these sections and put the lavender in that, and then I'll be back. Okay, so here we are. This is the milled lavender, and this is tattered rose. And these are the Distress embossing powders. Don't know if they're still making them. I know they're making the paints and everything. Not really sure about the... Uh, embossing powders, but hopefully they do. But any embossing powder would work as long as you have some that are colors that you could live with. Now I'm just going to not even going to even up. I'm just going to cut off this little tag here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling this into a circle. I can still feel, maybe I ought to put that to the outside. I'm just going to push it up a little bit. And more than likely these swirls are not going to show, but I didn't want just plain translucent clay. So I'm just going to roll this into a jelly roll. And I'm not even going to worry about the ends. And I've got my gold. And I think I'm going to roll this to a number three. I always look at the ugly side, put that on the inside. So let me just cut this loose.
and just roll this in the gold. And I made the mark, so I'm going to cut right inside that mark. And that will bring us to just meeting. I like to squish it so it makes it a little fatter at the beginning. Then I'm going to take, this is the same as a um, chrysanthemum cane. But what I'm going to do now, and I'll start right there since that's a seam, I'm going to take an old credit card or an old gift card. This is a my AARP expired card. Let me try to just make sure I get all the other colors of clay off of it. And I'm just going to start cutting slices in it. Not You can go down as far as you want. I'm going to try to keep them even if I can. But the dullness of the credit card or whatever card you use is going to push this gold down into your color or into your translucent. So I'm just going to still go around And then just go back and put more little grooves in it wherever you feel like you have room for it. If you've ever seen the chrysanthemum flower, it's made up of a lot of little petals. Now my other one, you can see here where I pressed in, and that's the gold down inside. So just make sure that... You go down, you know, at least a quarter of an inch or as far as you want to go to get these striations in your cane. I'm putting more in this time than I did before. So hopefully this is going to work. Just roll it all together. You can heal these seams. And I need to let this rest. This is very soft right now. So I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit so it would be more of the size of my original cane, which about this size. And I'm going to take it and put it in the refrigerator, and then I'll be back after it's cooled off. Okay, here is my cane. I don't know if you can see the pink and lavender swirls or not. We'll see how much of that shows. And I'm going to put this on the white cane first, on the white egg rather. And I do need to just smooth it out a little bit. A lot of these you can finagle, a lot of these things as you put it on, but you want to get most of your major wrinkles out. And I'm just going to start placing these on here. And you see this is a just a piece of a of a cane. So I'm just going to it doesn't look like my gold went in quite as much as I had hoped. But I can see the purple and pink swirls. And just start putting it on. You can just put them on randomly. Now I did slice these by hand. I normally use my Lucy slicer when I'm going to be slicing. canes, but just overlap and just keep overlapping. 
if I had looked at this before I started, I would have seen that my thorns aren't very long, but we'll see if we can't get it to look like something similar. And just keep going. Now, if you can imagine me doing this on a real chicken egg, I was scared to death. And one thing I didn't do, which I should have, and I'd forgot, and by the time I remembered it was too late. In my original egg, I put some beads on the inside, so it shakes. Sounds like a little rattle of sorts. So you just keep adding. Make sure that you've got your thorns going in whatever direction. I keep saying thorns. You may think they don't look like thorns, but that's what I always call them. And this one's pretty thin. I don't want to bend this one, so I'm going to just put that like right there. See, as you press it on, some of these thorns seem to get a little uh, longer. I'm going to show you, well, let me do this first. I have this little piece here, and I needed something right along in here, so I'm going to just put that up in there and then I can put another piece here. Here's another slice that's just a piece. And I'm just gonna use them. You're just, like I said, doing this randomly. Now on my blue one, I'm going to use slices from my original cane which have a yellowish tint to them because, you know, regular uh, translucent clay does have a yellowish tint. And uh, so I don't know how that's going to look on the blue, but I'm just curious to find out. I'm looking for the mailman. I'm expecting a very exciting package today. And I just heard a truck and thought it was him, but it wasn't. But you can overlap these as much as you, or as little as you want. I'm, I'm choosing to overlap them a lot because I like these gold lines in here. I'm going to have to cut some more slices. I wasn't cutting them very straight, it appears. So let me cut some wedges here at the bottom to kind of even it up a little bit because I can still use these end pieces. Cut some more round ones, or sorta. That one wasn't very round either. I'm too close to this edge, and there's a lip here, and I think that's catching my blade. Let me just move these over a little bit. But I would think that would be enough to cover this egg.
Now this layer is the layer where it's very important that you smooth out your surface. Because the I, I plan on buffing and polishing this egg too. And the only way this is going to look nice if it's buffed and polished is if it's if it is uh, smooth. Otherwise, you have a lot of sanding to do. And if you're like me, I, I don't like to sand. I kill my fingers when I sand. And I just don't like it. But on this one, I'm making sure I cover up all the white. And here's where I will use one of these half pieces. And I will use this one to cover up the bottom. And I need some gold right down around here. So I'm just going to put this here to add some gold. And I might put one across, well, I don't know. Let's put one across here just, just because I can. So this one now is completely covered. And I'm going to, while it's still war you know, warm from being handled, I'm going to go ahead and roll it between my hands to try to get as much of this done as I can. I couldn't do this with the egg. With the real egg, it, it would have fallen. Crushed it. I didn't mean fallen, I meant broken. And then take your roller and just go over it. Because you want to get this as smooth as you can before you bake it. There will be a whole lot less sanding you'll have to do at the end. And you just kind of have to feel it. There's a little piece of white right there. Rather than try to dig it out, I'm just going to take the little piece of gold that's over this and just lay it on top. But try to make it as round as you can because, you know, eggs are kind of perfect as far as being round they might be different sizes but their shapes are pretty round let me see if I can show you the difference in size between the egg covered in clay and the one that's not so you can see you increase the size quite a bit by adding actually two layers of clay because I've got the white layer underneath. But I'm going to finish rolling this. I'm going to apply the canes. These are the canes from my the slices from my other cane. I'm going to put these on the blue one and I'm going to bake them and we're just going to see what we've got. And I don't know if you can tell, the more you roll these, the more these little thorny pieces come out. So that's always a cool thing. Excuse me, cool thing too. So 
So I will be back after I finish the other egg and I smooth them out. I'm going to roll them on my table. Anything I can to get them smooth. And as soon as they're baked, I will be back and we will finish these. Okay, I have gotten my eggs out of the oven and I want to show you something. I left out a very important step and now I have something to show you how that ha what happens. Uh, this egg turned out okay. I still need to sand it. This one, if you look at it, it's a little misshapen. See right there, there's a big hump. I forgot, and I should it should have reminded me, but I, because but anyway, I should have put a little pinhole somewhere in the egg so that the hot air inside could escape. If you look at the plastic eggs, I don't know if you see that there's holes here on the ends. I should have taken just a pin and stuck in one of these holes before I baked it and I forgot that step and as a result um, I just realized my sorry my camera is unplugged it will die on me shortly if I don't plug it in sorry about that so what happened with this one is the hot air inside um, came out of the egg and there was no place for it to go. So it ended up forming these bubbles all over the egg. And it's my own fault. I know better. I know I should have done it. But at least this way, I have something to show you what happens when you don't do that. So I will make another one. I believe I have some of this cane left. This is the blue and the pink, which really turned out kind of neat. You can see some of the swirls in there. Uh, I'll do another one with this. This one also ended up being smoother than this one. And, you know, I'll show you, if I get it done before I finish the video, I'll post a picture at the end. But right now, I'm just going to work on this one. Now, uh, this is a piece of felt. I laid my eggs on a piece of felt so that they wouldn't uh, get a shiny spot on them. You can use baking soda. Um, you can use batting, cotton batting that you put inside a quilt. Things like that you can use. But now this is going to need to be sanded. So what I'm going to do is bring in my sanding tray. Now this is just an old plastic shoebox. And this is a piece of foam that was in some packaging that I got. Something I got in the mail came with this foam uh, packaging. So I kept some of it. And I'm going to use the uh, Sculpey Wet Dry Sandpaper Variety Pack that I got at the um, Hobby Lobby clearance. I can get my scissors to open the package. And this comes in it's, it's wet dry sandpaper. It comes in four, excuse me, 400, 600, 800, and 1,000 grit. Now, because this is pretty rough, I'm also going to start with this. Uh, it's, it's like a mesh that you use, a drywall mesh is what it is. You use it to sand drywall paste when you're doing your walls. And what I'm going to do, actually I think I have a better piece of this. Excuse me for a minute while I get that. Well, I can't seem to find it right now. But what I'm going to do, I'll show you. This has got water in it. Because you never want to sand dry 
uh, polymer clay. But what I would do is, and I have to, because I have to use a mask, because I can't um, breathe in the, the dust, it has really messed me up before, and I don't want that. So in, in this water, I'm also going to put just a drop of dishwashing liquid. And this just kind of helps lubricate it a little bit. And it will mix in as I use it. But what I would do is lay this in there on the on the um, mesh and just start rubbing. And I like to do a circular a circular motion. The drywall mesh will take more of the clay off. So it will help smooth it out a little bit more. But I'll just keep doing this until it starts to feel smooth. Then I will switch over to the um, Sculpey wet dry sandpaper and it only goes up to a thousand. So I have some more sandpaper here that's in 1200, 1500 and 2000 grit. So if it's not smooth enough for a polish by the time I finish that, I probably will use these. So I have to, like I said, I have to wear a mask and I don't talk very well and plus this is going to take a little while. But I'm just going to do the exact same thing with my sandpaper as I'm doing with this. I'm going to put it in here and I'm just going to just move it around and around and around. Now this isn't creating a lot of dust and it, it shouldn't if, it's, if it stays wet. But I have gotten some really bad sinus infections after sanding clay. But uh, I can already feel where this is smoothing it out. So I will be back after I finish sanding and we will buff it and see how this looks. Okay, I just thought I would jump back in here for a minute. Um, this is just about ready. I did find my larger piece of drywall mesh. But every once in a while, take it out and rub your fingers over it. Now right here, I still feel roughness. So, and if I sound funny, it's because I have a mask on. And you just, like I said, just kind of keep sanding. I've been sanding maybe 10 minutes on this. And I've just about got it to where I'm ready to switch over to sandpaper. It's a little bit of a big difference right there. Your fingers on a wet egg are your best uh, way is the best way of testing to see the how smooth it is because you can just feel it should glide right over it. And if it doesn't glide like right there, then you know you need to sand some more. Should just start to feel really, really slick and smooth. A little bit more right there, right where I was doing it. I'm just trying to make this easier for you, but you're not going to learn if I don't show you some of these things. Sometimes you can feel, like doing this, I can feel that there's a rough place. I think it's this right here. And a little bit there. But, you know, it just takes some patience. Take your time. This is not something you do if you're impatient, which is one reason I don't do a lot of sanding and buffing, because I am so impatient. But even if you decide to apply resin instead of um, sanding and buffing, you still want it to be smooth because if, otherwise the resin is just going to show all of your little imperfections. I think, well, just right there. 
I think I'm about ready to switch over to sandpaper. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Well, I got a place right there. Thought I was finished. But this is a part that you don't want to take any shortcuts. Because you've gone to all the work to make your cane and cover your egg and everything and get it the way you want it. So you really don't want to take a shortcut here and end up with something that's not, is not what you want. I've been having trouble with this spot right here and I have tried several times. Let me... Maybe, if y'all are watching, maybe I'll get it done right this time. It does feel smooth. One little lump right there, but it's not rough, it's just a lump. And I want to try to smooth that out a little bit. And then we should be done with this part which is the drywall mesh. If you don't have drywall mesh, you can get a really rough sandpaper, like maybe an 800, I mean 80, or still right there. About an 80 grit, which is really, really rough. Because what you're doing with this is mainly removing, you're removing a lot of clay. The other clay, other Sandpaper is not going to remove that much clay. And I wouldn't have even used this if it had been smoother. So one way to avoid having to do this is to make sure it's really, really smooth before you bake it. don't know why that one spot just doesn't seem to want to go away. Alright, so that's it. And I usually keep two of these together. Because I'm going to pull this out and put it in here because it's wet. Now, the Sculpey sandpaper started at 400. I'm going to put in some 220 sandpaper first because it's still not as smooth as it should be. But it's a lot closer than it was. And every grit that you go up, the lower the number on your sandpaper, the rougher the sandpaper is. So when you start at like 220 and then go up 2, I usually go 220, then I'll do 400, 600, 800, and on and so forth. But you're, if you let this dry in between, you can see the grain that you're putting on there, and I'm afraid the... Uh, it may not, but I would think this drywall mesh would leave a little bit of scratching on your egg. So I am just trying to sand over it. And make sure all those little grains are out of it. Because, as, like I said, as you get down to the finer grits, they're not going to remove as much clay. So it's going to be difficult to cover up some of these imperfections when you go further down. So let me... S and again, just use your finger because you're, going to, you're not going to get it all the first time. You think you're getting the whole egg and then you rub across it and you find out that you didn't get it after all. So I'm going to continue this and when I'm finished with this sandpaper I'm going to go to the 400, the 600, and 800, and 1000 
and then I'll see where it goes from there and then I'll be back. Okay, I decided to stop at the 1000 grit paper. Um, it's the, I've dried it off. You can see some of the blues peeking through here where I sanded so much because I was trying to get the ridges smooth. But that's okay. It is Easter. It's going to be multicolored and hopefully we can get some of the blue to come through these other places. So what I'm going to do now is polish. And I still have my mask on. I don't think I need it, but I don't want to take any chances. I have got a variable speed Dremel. And it goes from off, then there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And what I ended up doing, let me show you what I did. I took, took some felt, which is just this plain felt like this, just craft felt, and I cut out several circles and I stuck a nail through it. Can you see that this is just a, I don't know if it's a ten penny nail or what, but I put a nail because that was fit in here and I'm going to use that as my base. Let me see if I can get this Oh, it's still hooked up there. I was saying, why is my cord so short? Let me just get it to where I know this is going to... There's a certain place. Well, maybe it's in there. Anyway, I'm going to tighten this as tight as I can. And see, that won't come off now. And I'm going to take... I'm going to turn it on to the slowest... The slowest, you hear me, the slowest um, speed. And it's still going to be pretty high. See, that's your slowest speed. But these will generate heat. And if you use too fast a speed on your clay, it's going to actually heat up the clay and it can burn it. It can misshape it. It can do all kinds of things to it. So stick... Let me take my mask off. I don't think I really need it. I, I just, it was getting in my way. So I'm going to turn this on to the number two. And I'm going to hold it very carefully and I'm just going to start buffing. And you want a light touch. I think I'll just buff one side at first and then I'll show you the difference in the two. But just a light touch again, you don't want to you know create too much heat. And the blue doesn't seem to be coming through like I hoped it would. But that's okay. Some of this, some of these places, the clay is kind of thick. But again, you take your time. Go in different directions. Now, the one that I did before, I used a Fordham to polish, a Fordham buffer. But I, for one thing, I can't afford a Fordham buffer. Another, I don't have room for one. And I found that my little Dremel does just as well. Now one thing I might warn you about is you can overbuff. You can get it to where it's shiny and then you keep buffing and buffing and buffing trying to get it shinier and all it does is heat up the clay and it ends up being dull again. 
So once you get a shine, you need to stop. Of course, these are entirely different colors than the ones I used in my original egg. Whoops. I think I'm about with finished with this half. But what I want to show you, can you see the shine on this side? How pretty and shiny it is? And this is the side I didn't do. See, there's no shine whatsoever there. But can you see that shine? So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. And I'll do it while we're here. Just because I want you to see the whole thing finished. Be sure you hold this carefully. Uh, if you use a, a, a Dremel to polished jewelry or anything small. Be careful with the position. Like this wheel is going this way so it means that anything that's in my hand is going to fly this way if I let go. You just need to be careful when you have small small pieces that they aren't going to fly and hit you in the face. Because they will fly out of your hands, some of the smaller pieces. And you can see it doesn't really take long. Just look at it and see the areas that are not polished. But you can see why people ca started calling this a crown of thorn egg. But there you go. There is my crown of thorn eggs. Egg. This, they're all, they, each one is going to turn out different. Um, you know, like this I put on blue cat clay. If I put it on white, these areas would be white instead. And I should have covered those a little bit more with some clay, but I just didn't notice them before the clay was baked. And then, of course, sanding them. I ended up sanding a lot of the translucent off. If you want more of the blue to show, then all you need to do is just sand the center pieces as you are sanding. Just make sure these center pieces get sanded a little bit more so that some of the blue will come through, but I'm not going to go through the process again. I just wanted you to see my crown of thorn egg, and everybody had been asking me how I made it. So there you go. Let me see if I can zoom in and keep this in the frame. It's not easy sometimes, but there you go. Kind of looks like thorns, doesn't it? I like this side better. See how those look like thorns? Great gift for Easter. So I hope you like this. I will, uh, oh, I see a little crack where probably why this one didn't explode because there's a teeny tiny little crack there. I hadn't noticed it before. Can you see right, right there, that little crack? It looks like part of the design, so I'm not worried about it. But that's why this egg didn't blow up and get all disproportioned like this one did. Look at this one. You can see it close up. You can really see how bad it's distorted, especially right through here. And there's a big bubble. But this would have been beautiful. I should sand that just to see what it's going to look like. But hope you like this. And I will be back soon with another polymer clay tutorial. Bye-bye.